the exhibition that was just on, I, I, I had 18 to 20 paintings going at once. Just because this, this process does take a while, uh, because you're waiting on certain layers to dry. Just coat, coating the canvas with a medium, it's called oiling out. I wouldn't try this if your painting isn't entirely dry. Is that the same medium you used for the first one? Uh, yes. Yeah. I will actually be using a slightly fatter mix at the moment. But actually when you're using alkyd mediums, the rules aren't so stringent, if you know what I mean. Because they're quite quick drying. I know that that's pretty dry before I start the next layer anyway. Just take the excess off a little bit. I like to jam the canvases right at the lip because you almost get this lip at the bottom. It's difficult to do the bottom edge of your paint. You know? I just sort of jam, jam it between this lip and that lip. Okay. Okay, so what's the plan here? Let's, let's have a glaze happening. I don't want to lean my mix by, so anytime that you want to clean your brushes, just give them a dry off. Um, I'm actually going to add some of this fatter medium here. So. Now, because I've got medium on my canvas, I barely need any medium to do my glaze. I'll just show you by just putting straight, uh, this is called Perolo Vermilion. Um, and what I want to do is intensify this orange, kind of intense colour up here. And I'm not too bothered about going over the blues. You can take it back, but you see the intensity of that? And then I just add a little medium to move it about. The great thing about glazing is you can be quite clumsy with it. Quite, uh... Now I could go ahead and put this orange right over most of the painting if I wanted, and then sort of take it back with a rag. So with any time you're glazing, you're just adding a colour and then subtracting it if you like. If you're using, uh, this is an artist colour here, uh, of, of quite an intense uh, pigment um, and it can stain the canvas. So, and because I'm using a quick drying medium, it can actually dry very, very quickly. And I'm taking that glaze right over the distant hills and you can see that it transitions that colour that it used to be into something new. It's not an orange by any means, but it's just an optical mix of the orange plus the layer below. Now that's way too intense. Uh, it, might, it might be all right. You might be, you might think, yeah, we'll just go with it. But uh, I think I'm going to show you how I would tackle taking that back a little bit. So, if you wanted just to reveal the underneath blue there to get the contrast. You can do so. Get the intensity back within this eye hand. And I actually work glazing and in pastel in the same layers so that I start with a glazing layer and then I move into um, areas of in pastel. Um, but also quite like working with with grey glazes to grey out colour. So what I want to do is just transition the the orange so that we have an intensity about it up here. And then it just tapers down. And then if you like you can suggest the reflections of that colour within the foreground by a very light glaze. Got 
look quite cool, cool grey. I'm just going to suggest some of these foreground rocks with larger strokes. My work is all about peripheral vision and your perception of peripheral vision. Suggesting things on the periphery. I like to think of my scenes as slightly wide-angle lens. I want to encapsulate the viewer within the scene so that you're kind of surrounded by it. The actual view itself is very is slightly slightly zoomed in, if you like. It's not a wide-angle lens scene, but the suggestion of the sky and the suggestion of the foreground encloses you within that scene. Oh, well, that's the idea. Again, using Matisse's idea where we can set off some of the brighter colours by using areas of grey. You'll probably notice that I kind of work one hue at a time. And each time, a brush or palette knife goes back to the painting, I have transitioned that colour to the next hue. So I'm manipulating one hue to another, to another. And it keeps my colour relationships sound. I lost my lightest light within this during the process of that glazing, so I'm just going to return to an impasto. You've got to be careful using white within your paintings. White can be cool, and if you're trying to describe light, you want to warm up a little bit. I mean, you can see how light that is on its own. But that is the, the, the kind of light I want to, to achieve to describe the light hitting this area of this cloud. I can drop on an empowering stroke and refine that. So I've now set my lightest light back in. And I can continue with marks where I believe that this cloud is going to want lightened. Don't worry too much about the bleed. And it's going to be quite a light front to this house because it's kind of facing a light that's coming across this way, so... Uh, but I don't want it to compete with this. But because it's beside a very very dark colour. It's going to stand out. This is actually Tyree. I've got, I've got a photographic reference I'm supposed to be using, uh, but I, I don't believe in using a lot of photographs. I think I, I like the, the idea that I can have my own ideas about what's happening. What I do want to do is describe the shoreline, which is going to draw the eye in a little bit. I'm just using that same lightest light 
describe this. And rather than follow this exactly, I want to make decisions about where this line's going myself to, to sort of create an arc in here. Um, all my, my detail, and there's something going to be quite interesting happening here once I've got my, my crackles of colour across here to describe the colour, the, the glints of the rocks. It's going to be quite left weighted, so that things are happening down here. So if I can use this to start to create something to happen the other way, it can help me decide. I don't really want it bringing the viewer's eye out of the painting, so I create a shape to stop you. Almost like two beaches here. It's a strange one. This is the west coast of uh, a South Eust, and the crossing where you come over is uh, down at the bottom there. So this is the right of the south tip of Eust, it's behind there. Okay, this is when I crack open the uh, blue for the first time. Blocks blue is. Uh, uh, they call it, uh, sometimes within painting they call them red shades or whatever, but um, it's a red shade of cyan, blue is a, a, a it, well it's a magenta shade of cyan, it's actually a, a purpley coloured blue. It's very easy when you, when you mix blue with cyan and magenta, which is a strange Strange concept for a lot of people to understand, um, but creating a blue, uh, it means that the cyan transitions very quickly into what could be called purple, or what we perceive as purple. So I've already got my medium on the canvas, and this blue is going to deepen the uh, section here to give us a very cool but bright blue. And then from the side. Ooh, that's okay. And this actually complements the the kind of yellowy oranges that will come from here. They're not quite yellow yet, but I'm just gonna introduce yellow to that glaze in a minute. I'm going to introduce some impasto strokes, which will be made from actually purple and cyan, which should give me a slightly different blue. And in using two separate blues here, you can see that the blocks blue is slightly greeny and this blue is slightly more purple, but the transition creates a visual interest that wouldn't be there if you lazily just used the same colour and the same colour again, and then kept going back and just lightened and darkened the same colour. Sophisticated colour use is all about taking the long way around mixing. And you probably noticed that half my time spent there and half the time is spent here. And that's probably too much time spent in front of the canvas. You, every stroke that you put onto anything that you do must be considered and must take consideration and thought. And I'm thinking about the next stroke while I'm mixing that. And uh, laziness within colour mixing is half the battle to get around for a lot of painters. 
Okay, a better wrap of this so we can get home. Okay, I hope, I hope I've painted enough so that you can see the things happening. I do tend to talk a lot uh, at these things, but I hope I've managed to, uh, to, to tell you a little bit of something you maybe didn't know. <laughs> well, you're Big thanks to Ian who's uh, been great helping me out with stuff and, and his organisation here has been fantastic. So thanks Ian. I can listen to you all night. <laughs> um,